Today I am going to show you how to create a simple certification authority using OpenSSL. So OpenSSL has all the algorithms required for necessary cryptographic operations. Plus it has a rich set of commands where we can be easily used to generate or easily used to set up a certification authority. Unfortunately, these commands require a lot of parameters, configuration parameters that make the people difficult to use OpenSSL on this regard. Because of that, I have created simple set of scripts where you can use to set up a simple certification authority uh, by using OpenSSL. If you want to try it out yourself, first of all, uh, you, uh, you just uh, clone my Git repository where I put those scripts. So you run Git uh, form, and this is the repository. Custom user OpenSSL CS Git. Uh, when you clone it, uh, you may get the directory open as a cell here. It has uh, it has kind of uh, you see it has kind of uh, scripts. This is the configuration script, sample configuration script of open as a cell. So you can find this such similar default scripts uh, by changing the parameters here you can change a lot of options or a lot of things available in this CA certificate setup or certification authority setup so you can go through that later on so there you may understand the necessary parameters required for setting up a certification authority. Then I have created three scripts here. First script shows you how to create certification authority. Second one shows you how to set up, a, how to obtain a certificate for the web server using this CA. And the third one shows you how to obtain a certificate for yourself using this particular CA. Let's have a look at the, the script of create CA. So there you see in the first part of the script, which I have created some directory structure. So those directories will be used to store those private keys, certificates, and so on. So the main command which generated the certificate authority it's given here. It says open SSL request new X509 type certificate for this this time period. Extension I use version three extensions. Private key of the CA will write it here. Public key of the CA is this, and I'm using the configuration file called CA config to generate this certification. So I'm going to uh, use that uh, uh, command uh, to run this. Actually, I'm using scripts. Run these scripts and set it up the certification of it. Maybe some of you may not have the open SSL installed. But I will give some support to that as well. So if you don't have OpenSSL installed, I have created simple Docker file where you can use it uh, to uh, where you can use it to so I will change my directory to this which I drawn. So it has several files. You see, CA configuration file and those three scripts, and you see some readme and the Docker file. 
So I have created this Docker file to, for you, where you can install or set it up a simple uh, Ubuntu Docker image. Uh, it's a it's use Ubuntu Ubuntu, and then I install OpenSSL to this image, and I I can run that. Uh, uh, I first of all I I, I can uh, run this script uh, and uh, I, I can run a Docker uh, to set it up this unnecessary Docker image. So for that I run Docker build nst. My image name is unnecessary using the Docker file in the root. Since I have already executed it before, it may not take time. If you execute the first time, it fetch the Ubuntu image, and then it update and install the OpenSSL to the image. So it might take time uh, when you run it first time. So you need to run it only once. So after you run that, at any time you want to execute OpenSSL commands or my scripts, uh, you run the image. Uh, you, for that, you use a command docker run. Uh, RM means uh, remove the docker container after exit. And then using minus V, I map my current directory to the home of the root directory. So we are we can save the certificates created into the home or the host file itself. Even I work with the image, whatever I created will store in, in my current directory. I name it as uh, the container name is OpenSSL image. I use it OpenSSL. Just execute that Docker run. It basically uh, give me the uh, simple Ubuntu VM which is told uh, Open SSL. So I just change to my home directory. So yeah, you are there. You may see all the scripts which I pull from the or clone from the my Docker uh, repository. So then, what you should do? So after you push pull those scripts or clone those scripts, maybe these scripts may not have the executable right. So you need to uh, change the mode of uh, uh, operations uh, to the X that it executes all scripts. So after that, when you see the content, you may see these three scripts which has the command in the executable file. My configuration is also there. Right. Now you have the open SSL install whenever which, whichever you my operating system you it doesn't matter windows or ubuntu or, or, or mac os if it is a ubuntu open is already installed you don't need the docker if it not so we can run the open ssl in a simple docker image uh, using those uh, scripts which i created now you have the open ssl so first of all, we need to then run the script create CA, create CA scripts to create a certification authority. So you just run the script. So it will do the necessary file setup automatically, and it create the key pairs for the certification authority. After you cre create the key pair, it has a password to protect the private key of the certification authority. You have a, you, you should give a password and remember that. So this password is required later on to showing the certificates. So I have given some default name for the certification authority. Uh, the country name is a two letter country code that is LK. So if you prefer to use default, you keep it as it is. Otherwise you change it like here. So I am using the default. Uh, the, Province, Western, locality, Colombo, I'm using. Organization, I use it as University of Colombo. Organization unit, 
I use again the default school of computing. When, when you want to try the uh, common name, you need to give your, your name for your certification. Okay. I type it as UCSCCA. Then you can type your email address if you wish. It is not mandatory. So after that, it has created a self-signed certificate for the certification authority and store it in the folder and show you the uh, CS public key and the private key. CS public key, save it in the directory called SSL CA under the current directory and the private key save it in SSL CA private key directory under the current directory. The CA set PEM is the public key of the certification authority. CA key PEM is the private key of the certification authority. After that, your certification authority is ready. So the keys are stored in this particular directory. Now you're going to is, uh, create a certificate for, let's say for your web server. So for that, you can run a script called create host, uh, create host certification.sh. Let's have a look on the script list. So this is the script. So there you see it has the two open SSL commands. First one is called open SSL request nodes. Out is a host request. Key out is host key PM and configuration file I'm using the uh, CA, CLF file. So after this command executed in the script, it will create a, what we call it as certification request, host request PM. And private key of the cert, uh, uh, this request will written into host key.pm file. Let me execute that. Uh, sorry. Uh, uh, sorry, I, I did some mistake. So I kind of exit this without any changes. Uh, so this is my script, right? In this window, I am running that. So after I run that, it asks the name for the uh, your web server. You can use default as you wish. If you use uh, if if you use LK for creating a CA. So your web server also should also under the LK. If you change that, it may not issue certificates. So I configure the CS scripts as such. So later on, if you want, you can remove it, those rules under ca.cnf file. Anyway, I use default uh, names, organization, and so on. When you want to type the common name, you must type the domain name of your uh, web server. So for example, if you are planning to set up a web server called www.scolab.org, you should type that here. And then you can type your email. Uh, there. Yeah. Uh, the domain name is something mandatory. So you must type your correct domain name here or else your IP address. Best practice is typing the domain name. So if you type the wrong domain name, you may not be able to use that certificate to set up the SSTLS web server. Right. So you can omit this uh, uh, challenge password by just pressing the enter key. After you finish these steps, uh, scripts, it move on to the second command. Actually in the second command, so first command create a, what we call it as certificate request, and the request file is save it as host request. After that, we run the open SSL, the second open SSL command to show a public key certificate based on this request. So in this, it says, uh, open SSL CA configuration is CA.CNF 
output is host certificate dot pm file and i am using the request host request which created in the previous step so you see the script the second script has already run and it asks a password to access the private key of certification authority so you must give the correct password which you have given at the time of creating a c sorry I, I i enter the command again in the wrong wrong window uh, so you must run uh, enter your password here right you see so it created the uh, certificate uh, it created this as uh, it, this is a, a certificate request and uh, it asks whether i would like to sign this request so i say yes after that it issue the public key certificate to based on this request and then ask me whether i would like to commit it into the certification authority database so i say yes so all done now you have installed or you have created a certification authority for a web server so let's see the directory so this is your certificate request file you can even submit this certificate request file to a commercial ca and obtain a certificate if you wish but my simple certification local certification authority already certified uh, your uh, request actually this is for secret sorry this is a certificate request this is the public key certificate of the web server this is the private key of the server you can move these two files host set pvm and host key pvm files into your web server any web server and configure it there this host request file if you wish you can submit it to any commercial certification authority and obtain a certificate as well you don't need to do that you already have now to uh, receive a certificate from your own certification authority you can have a look if you wish because so it's a text file so when you have a look it is something look like the detail of this ce is given on the top a certificate is given on the top saying the detail of it and then this is the issuer that is the ca you just created and this is subject means the web server name so you see here its common name is your domain name of the web server so this certificate has issued to this particular web server by your own ce so this is the pem encoded public key certificate so there are tech, when there are two types usually we use to store the certificates and relevant files so one is pem encoded text format other one is der encoded binary format so this file is in the text format now let's see we want to create a certificate for yourself so you can use the certificate for signing some documents later on we can discuss how to use it maybe for uh, signing objects or uh, in java files you can use or you can use it to send and receive emails you can store them in the browser and enable bidirectional authentication between your tls server and your browser like that so there are different applications of the personal certificates so the web server certificates are very common everybody use it to set up a tls the personal public key certificates usually we are using right so but let's try to create a personal certificate so this is a script we i created to do that the first command in this script as usual will create a certificate request for yourself and the second script will sign that request and the third script will export your certificates necessary keys 
and the certificate of the CA into a single panel called a public key PKCS 12 format of certificates too. So it called as U PFX file format or the some P12 is another extension we use for them. So such PFX or the PKCS 12 standard storage structure is used to store the private keys, certificates, and the trusted certificates. So such store we can use it for different applications uh, as well. So I will create a user certificate and import that to a browser and show you how it works in a minute. Right. Let's run my script called create uh, uh, create a user certificate dot script. So it run the first command in this script. And it created the request for that. Uh, created a public private key and asked me the uh, detail of myself. I use the default and when it asks the common name, I type my name. So then it creates a certificate to myself. Then when it asks the email, I type my email address. If you have planned to use this public key certificate to protect the emails, you must type the correct email address here. Otherwise, you will not be able to use it for email security. In the previous case, you must type the cor correct domain name under the common name field that is something must. Here, the personal certificate email address is something must. You need to be make sure you type the correct email address here. So after that, you can omit this challenge option. So your certificate request has created, you see, it called user set request. So you can submit that to a commercial GA as well if you wish. But now I'm using that to sign a certificate. So in the second command in this script, second command is already executed. So it then asks here, a parser of the CA. So I enter it as usual, it issue the certificate. I say yes, they sign it, and then I say yes, commit it. It created the public key certificate for uh, myself. You see, there is a certificate created. This is the private key of the me, and this is the certificate of me. It already created. You see, issuer is the CA name, which uh, our certification authority name, subject is my name, the information, information which I just given is shown here. So after that, it runs the third, third command in my script. So that is this will export or uh, bundle everything into the format called PKCS 12. So the script is already executed and it has a password protect to this particular file. PKCS 12 file is protected with the password since it has the private keys inside of that file. You should not send this P12 file to a third parties. Actually, you should keep it yourself because your private keys are there. So this is that file, PKCS 12 file. It is a binary file. So you cannot see the detail. So if you want to send your public key to someone else, while you should send to the someone else is your public key. So that it is that is in the user set PM. So this is your public key in the format of public key certificate. You can distribute your public key to your friends or whatever the people who wants to protect the information to yourself, right? So this file you have to keep as protected in your computer because it has the corresponding private key. After you created those, you can import this to any application. So I will show you how to do it in your uh, Firefox uh, browser. So, so. 
let me uh, share the uh, Firefox uh, browser now. Right, in this browser, you go to uh, preferences. In the preferences page, uh, somewhere you might see uh, privacy security. Uh, and at the bottom, you may see view certificates. So under view certificates, there are public key certificates are visible, like your certificate, uh, and authentication decisions, and then uh, people, other people's certificates, and the web server certificates, and the certification authority certificates. So you see, there is a certificate issued to me from a server called University of Columbia. Actually, that that is here because of, of because of my previous run. So maybe I will uh, delete it. Uh, so there are no no such. Uh, uh, certificates to myself now. And under authority, you can see different certification authority in the world. There yeah, you might see uh, my uh, University of Colombo CEA certificates I previously uh, installed in this browser. I, I will delete that for the moment as well. So so then you can see only the certificates of other, other organizations. You can view those certificates by clicking and viewing those. So you can see the uh, detail of those uh, certificates. Those certificates are self-signed certificates that mean issuer and the subject, subject of those certificates are same. So all of them under authority is the self-signed. So the your personal certificates are stored under your certificate and other people's certificates stored under uh, people. So, so under your certificates, I import uh, these certificates which I just uh, uh, created. Uh, so it is uh, store under UCSC. Uh, I think I put it uh, somewhere. Security tool, and then uh, let me remember. I am on the directory, I think, Java, uh, and then temporary directory, I under open SS. So when you go there, you may see the user PFX file, which I just created. So that is recognized by this Firefox, plus uh, many other applications which use public key cryptography will recognize this format. So you, now we are going to import it into the browser. So when it try to import first the application now the password to access this file so i type the password which i have given at last uh, so then say okay so you see the keys are imported into the browser you can view those public keys so you see it's my name as a subject and issuer is the ca you just created a few minutes ago so it is now correct certificates uh, for issued to myself. So corresponding CA certificates uh, should automatically go under here now because you see I have deleted it, now it's come back. So when you view that, so it is viewed here, right? So since this CA is not known to this particular browser previously, uh, so browser might tell that it's not trusted by Clicking this edit trust button, you can make this CA to be trusted. So you say, this CA is my CA, I am going to trust that. So after that, any certificate issued by this particular CA will be trusted by this particular browser. So when you view that, so you see it is custom design CA and signed by the UCSC Certification Authority. So, so all, uh, you see it's words. So you can even download that. So, so that's how we can create uh, a simple certification authority plus create certificates uh, to a web servers 
and yourself, personal self refers to yourself. Uh, so I will use those scripts and they see later on uh, in my uh, lectures where I teach uh, Java cryptography and then uh, uh, other cryptographic uh, classes. So follow the video and then get familiar with these tools and learn how to set up your own simple certification authority and issue certificates to your servers and your friends and yourself to do various activities. Thank you very much for listening so far.